Alright everyone, it's time for Occult Literature, video number 333, Dharma. This is an Andy uh, Annie Besant work. It's 53 pages, so it's on the short side, and it is oratorical. That is, that this is from a lecture, or I believe two separate lectures, initially uh, delivered in India, which, which definitely informs... Uh, part of its uh, its form and substance. Uh, first and foremost, link in the description of my edition of this work on Amazon. Second and third links to my books, blogs. I will be adding the entry later. This will go under the spiritual heading because it's theosophical. It's, theosophy is going to have its own heading at some point in the future, but first I'm wrapping up a few more literary projects. And this is an excellent work, and again, it's in lecture form. Um, and it dwells mainly... The first part explains the concept of Dharma loosely, uh, so sort of... It's karma, but it's a little bit different how it's explained, and I'll, I'll get into the basic uh, premise here. Because she was delivering a lecture to people from India, people of Hindu background, you know, theosophists, but uh, on that Hindu side, and this was sort of Besant's particular spin on it. Blavatsky um, delved mostly into, like, the Atlantean, like, the root race thing. That was her main interest. Um, Steiner went off. He, he developed Anthroposophy later. Um, he, he likes to talk about the astral, sort of anthropo uh, anthropological in some cases. Leadbeater appears to have been mostly informed by, by certain Buddhist uh, premises and, and also mediumship and things like that. So you have these different major figures within uh, mysticism at the time. They have different focuses. Besant's was definitely Hinduism, actually. Her adopted son, she thought would be the next avatar. <laughs> and he denied this and, and went off and did his own sort of ascetic lifestyle and did not try to become a godman. Uh, anyway, uh, the main premise of this, this entire second half of the work basically talks about the Hindu caste systems. Uh, for instance, like the Shudra, the peasants, um, the Kshatriya, which are, are sort of like the warriors and political leaders, and Brahma and so forth, the Brahmin, uh, and how these roughly equate to the concept of Dharma, which is that, for instance, with a Shudra, um, as, as a peasant, a laborer, servant, that, that particular caste of society. The idea is that person can be spiritually upright simply by obeying. The idea is that uh, their dharma can come from that. That's where they are in their spiritual development. And so to say to them, well, you have to be brave like a Shachaya. Uh, you have to be uh, an ascetic and, and adopt veganism and live a severe life out in a cave and, and act like a, a Brahmin or something. Or you, <laughs> you have to be an Agori. It wouldn't, it wouldn't make sense because their spiritual development doesn't require that they do that. All they're required to do is obey. Then you have the next class. I can't remember the actual name of it, the, the mercantile class. They're supposed to, there's ambition involved, there's money, work, hard work, but not, not, not the kind that a servant would do. Um, ownership, being fair in, in your trades and so forth, making sure to be upright in the fiscal sense, not screwing people over. That's their dharma. And so if they're, and so the shudra, uh, if they grifted a little bit off the top on their pay, it doesn't affect their dharma necessarily in the same way that it affects someone who's mercantile. Then you have the next cast, the warriors and leaders and stuff. They're supposed to be brave, fight. They're supposed to protect others, be righteous uh, in, in there. And also, to avoid specifically uh, uh, aggression uh, that is the, of their own volition. So the, the idea is that if you murder someone because of your own passion, that affects your dharma negatively. If you're a soldier in the field and you shoot someone, it doesn't. Because, of course, you're a soldier. You are, in fact, obeying the law of your dharma by doing so. In fact, to be a coward would, would negatively affect it. You're not required, though, to be still and peaceful and meditate. And so you're not as expected to do the things that a spiritual Brahmin would do. And then you have the Brahmin, which is the highest caste, uh, the most spiritually developed, according to the Hindu tradition, although the caste system is beginning to fall away, uh, as people realize that it's, it's horseshit, basically. Uh, I'm just going to come out and say it. The concept of castes that you're born into isn't even necessarily, spiritually speaking, uh, uh, necessarily uh, the proper interpretation of the basic dogma. That's the way it was politically used. Of course, by the people that were Brahmin and didn't want to work as hard, or people that were Kshatriya, and, and of course they wanted the political rulership. Well, it was very good for them. Very bad for the people at the bottom. And then you have the untouchables. Besant doesn't cover them. I guess with the untouchables... Uh, to deprave yourself is, is your dharma or something. You're supposed to scoop up cow poo or something like that. It, it's kind of bizarre the way it was incepted. And so the Brahmin uh, at the top in their conception uh, is meant to be holy, essentially. Meditate, ascetic, uh, great restraint, no violence, um, no, no profiteering, 
Uh, you don't need to do your own physical labor necessarily, but you can go wander off into a cave to meditate for the next month. Uh, you have to be upright and guide others and do the best that you can to be very spiritual, no lust, no no drugs, all of these things are disallowed. Things that wouldn't affect maybe a Shudra or a Shatraya on the same level, they're Dharma. Uh, the, the potentiation of the effect on Dharma rises as you go up through the echelon. Now, uh, is this basically a cop-out to explain why p certain p it's basically Plato-esque, isn't it? Uh, some people are made out of iron, some people are made out of copper, some people are made out of gold, and this is why there are different classes of people. It's sort of intellectually the same. And of course, when you take that system and you say, well, it's not based on situation of birth, it's based on that person's innate characteristics, you'll see that develop through childhood, essentially. That's more appropriate, that's, that's more maybe historically accurate if you're going back thousands of years to before political intrigue really uh, takes hold and, and the system is arguably corrupted. Uh, but Basant does a good idea of explaining the, ver the basic concept of Dharma, and of course Kasta talks about Ishvara, all these other things, all of these uh, various figures within Hinduism, uh, their representation of the basic concept, and the idea is that you're living manifold lives, and the hope is that you're fulfilling what's necessary on each level, and you're moving slowly away from the mortal, away from the workaday, the, the living and dying over and over thing, and, and you're moving upwards, you're ascending spiritually uh, towards oneness with, oneness with Ishvara, uh, and that this is sort of the goal. And by the way, the idea of non-existence, like, like you know, Westerners conceive of Buddhism being uh, after ending reincarnation, that's, that's absent. Uh, that's openly uh, discussed in this work as well. So again, 53 pages, very good work. Link in the description of my edition of this work on Amazon. I do definitely recommend it. Uh, this is very well written. Basant was an excellent lecturer. You don't have to agree with all of the summations that she makes, but she was a very good uh, orator, and uh, this is a very good book based on that. That's about all. Peace out.